today we're going to get some railing material for this porch railing. So uh, it's going to be pressure treated wood, painted white. This is five quarter by six, and we're going to use that for the top cap and part of the structure to hold the pickets on. So we're going to actually cut this down to size and prime and paint it as well. So this is a very simple design. It's actually really strong and I like the look of it. We got a lot of stuff to do here. The first thing I'm gonna do is rip down some old facial material that we had left over and put a four inch baseboard on this post. Well, all the posts. Then our handrail bottom rails are actually gonna sit directly on top of this baseboard. It'll give us a great little detail and a place to register that bottom material and make it all kind of nice and clean. I've also got some six by six posts that I'm gonna cut and make two equal segments of handrail here where the stairs will be centered between these two posts. It just so happens that these posts are not the same width apart as these posts. And that's how the house was built, so I couldn't change it. And the reason I couldn't change it is because up here on top of this post behind the trim, there's a joint in the framing material. What you see is just the trim, but the actual framing breaks dead center of that post. So I was stuck with leaving the post where it is even though it's not centered and not symmetrical. Also, the stairway is not gonna be centered on the door because I'm prioritizing making it look centered between these two posts and the handrail and all that. I think that's gonna look better than scooching it over and making it centered on the door and making some goofy short little handrail here. I don't like the idea of that. So we're gonna, we're gonna, that's what we're doing. And then uh, you can just shoot that together. Start by screwing a picket to the post there. That's the first step. It sits directly on the baseboard. There's another one. See, it's sitting on the baseboard. The top of it is one inch shorter than my overall height. So my, my height is gonna be 36. So this is 35 off the deck, literally off the deck. So we've attached two horizontal rails here, boom. Now we can start to put some pickets on. I got to figure out the picket spacing and then we'll go with it. Pull that one loose there. Okay, there we go. You can see I got a little ledge. This is one piece. I just saw this out of a piece of six by six to make this special shaped block that's going to support the rail in the middle because it's really bouncy. It's way, it's how wide is this? 10 feet? It's more than 10 feet. It's a little more than 10 feet. So we need to secure it in the middle and give it some vertical support. All right, next. We have figured out our spacing. I made sure there was a space in the middle of this whole segment. The whole width of this is a space in the center, not a picket, so that that post could be in the center. Now we figured out our spacing in between there and there. We got that figured out there and there. Now we can actually put some pickets on it. Now it's looking like something. All the pickets are in place time to add the second layer this piece here on both uh, the inside so the top and the bottom inside we're gonna add a second piece it's gonna get nailed together with some two and a half inch 15 gauge galvanized Senko nails uh, two nails in each one from each side and then maybe we'll throw a few screws in it as well so that will work out just fine then we'll put a top cap on okay I am Okay, Ray, let's see how we did here because there's a little rigmarole here, I guess you could say. Oh, wow, that's good enough for this house. What do you think? It's good enough for this house. It's the most level thing in this house. It is. That's weird. If you've seen a video before about this deck, you would know that this deck is sloped. It's actually an inch and a half lower here because I ran my decking perpendicular to the front of the house. I didn't want water to potentially run in. So the old, the old decks actually were all sloped out. So whatever, it's sloped. So the top cap is flat. I mean, dead flat, level. The bottom is parallel to the deck, okay? It is not level. And we are going to cut each picket the right length to make it, you know, I mean, it, it, it varies a lot. So we have to actually cut all those to fit, which is no big deal, but it'll be a little bit of a trick of the eye. It will probably not be noticeable, uh, but that's what we gotta do.
that there was a lot of work to produce this well it looks like a tenon doesn't it it looks like i'm going to be building a post and beam log house but actually this is just my little prop you see i got this little shoulder here for the thing to sit on that's going to make it nice and stable and uh, i can get a bunch of screws in this without it busting apart so uh that was a lot of work i'll tell you what there's probably a better way to do that but i got it done Ooh, these are long is that going to go all the way uh, it will but it'll be all right just hang with that one bit uh yeah get the twos get the twos i don't know they're down there under the rail way down on the shoulder Shoot. yeah center make sure you good center center i bought that center center yeah you like it oh yeah i love it Now we might add some screws in that later, but uh, let's go ahead and get this sighted straight and we'll screw that pre-drill uh, screw to the deck. All right, so the guys already put the top cap on this one. I didn't get to see it because they were working and whatever. Got it done. So look at that. We got one railing segment done. Just need a little bit of paint, but <clears throat> let's get back. Get a little perspective here. Looks pretty good. think it'll work got some baby stringers here look only three treads how about that here we go that's where they're going so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually cut like the bottom riser and a little hanger board I call it and I'm actually gonna assemble all these into one unit just like we do on bigger sets of steps I'm gonna hang it on the side of the house boom I'm gonna screw it on there suspend it over the dirt I'm gonna go ahead and dig a trench for the concrete and I'm gonna hang it over the concrete and then I'm gonna pour the concrete under it as it is sitting there. Hey, now, if that doesn't make you feel like a rock star, I don't know what will. I'm telling you what, folks. So, check it out. We have our stairway assembly built. Now, you might have noticed I nailed it together with finish nails. Who would do that? Me, I would do that because it's a very easy way to get the whole thing positioned. It's just simply a temporary way to position everything. And now we're gonna put screws in it. I am gonna pre-drill because stairway treads and uh, risers are notorious for splitting the stringer when you screw into this. This part of the grain that runs right there, that's a very prone place to break off. So we're gonna pre-drill so we don't break it. And I'm not gonna put any screws very close to this. We're gonna set down like two inches because I don't wanna break it. Okay, plain and simple. So now we can um, finish screwing it together. Oh no, it broke already. It's brand new. Dude, it totally broke. I'm taking it back. All right, I'm good here. So I'll tell you what we're doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this side in with a screw. Yeah. Don't stay too long. My bad. <laughs> well, I mean, there's oh, okay. there's you what? I'll see it on YouTube. Oh, I know. You'll, you'll see it a lot of times before that, too, probably. <laughs> All right, let's take this out here, Brett. I got it. No, you don't. All right, see you guys. Hey. See ya.
Here's my little trench. I dug it out, I don't know, maybe six inches deep. I'm gonna place the stairs back where they go. I'm gonna actually screw it in its final position. And as far as I know, I will not take it off again until this thing rots <laughs> and falls apart sometime in the future. <laughs> oh, wood steps, I tell you what. Anyway, I'm gonna hang this thing and we're actually just gonna prop it up with some stakes and sort of build like a little form work around it, if you will. And then start putting the concrete in until the level of the concrete comes up and contacts the bottom of these stringers. Now, something of note, this is number one grade pressure treated wood that is ground contact rated. Let's see, I'm gonna see if I can find a sticker somewhere. I don't know, I'll probably cut it off. That's pretty important though. Where's the end of the board? Let's see here, oh man. There's the end, nope. There's the end, nope. Where's the other end here? This is, this is kind of important. I, I wanna, wanna see if I can, uh, nope. Oh man, no tag. At any rate, I promise you, that was ground contact rated material, okay? It's critical because it won't rot as fast. Right, we're trying to build a deck. Are you trying to paint again? What do you got? What are you doing? This is uh, it's all dried up. Oh no. Well, raise the nail hole filling for me. Cause he can't wait to paint it. Look at that. All my, uh, actually not nail holes, screw holes. All the big screw holes, we countersunk the screws so I can fill them and paint them so they look beautiful. That's gonna be nice. Excited about that. Now, right now we're gonna start pouring some concrete. I have this uh, braced up, ready to go. Let's let it roll. There it is, all poured in. Now I raised the concrete level up till it just barely kissed the bottom of those okay so it's it's hopefully in essence perfectly level and flush with the bottom cut on the stringer so you know that's that's what i'm going for i found that this method is much easier than figuring out where the pad goes pouring a little pad and then setting your steps on it and all the angles of getting your bottom cuts just dead nuts perfect i don't know you could do it i've done it but uh this to me is a very easy way and i like it i'll probably continue to do this method so, um, and you'll notice that the top of the concrete is pretty much flush with the ground. <clears throat> it's not down in there, so this thing is hopefully not going to catch water, whatever. Lucky for me, I found some already dried six by sixes in the basement of my other house. They're gonna make the very front two newel posts. I'm gonna use a little baby router bit here to take these sharp edges off. And we're gonna be using these 90 degree angle brackets here to anchor the base of the post to our concrete slab here. So these are just your standard uh, drive-in anchors. And uh, we're gonna anchor that straight down to the footing and it will be uh, connected on the these two sides with screws through the front of the wood there. And then once you anchor it to the concrete and once you connect it with a handrail to that one, it's actually gonna be quite strong and very nice. In the meantime here, these guys are filling in and sanding these big screw holes that we countersunk. It was important to use a countersink bit so that we could fill them in. What do you do? Hey, hey. How you doing? Hey. Taco. Taco sander. Hey, you don't see those every day. Hey, uh, take that paper off. People, I swear, I have never seen one until Jono showed up to the job with this thing. It takes your regular hook and loop uh, sander paper and you just fold it on there and <clears throat> boom, you got a taco sander. 
super awesome tighten those spots we're going to be getting some primer put on these bare wood areas here in just a few minutes and hopefully make this thing like kind of look done you know from a distance anyway That took entirely too much effort to pull that out. Here's a real tip for you. Don't bury the screw head when you're putting that formwork together because you'll never find it when you're trying to pull it out and you'll get frustrated. But hey, let's check a look here. Uh, see how this edge of the concrete is nice and it's squared up perfectly to the shape of the stairs. That's what I want in any of it that is not down in there. It's recessed below the ground here. So that's great. All right, that's all gonna get covered in. You'll never see this concrete. It will not be visible, but it'll be there and it'll be doing its job. Check out this post right here. This is basically where it's going to sit, but I don't want it to sit fully inside these two pieces here. So what I'm going to do is actually cut around this on two sides, take out an inch and a half in both directions, and it will slide out and square up with this outside corner right here. That's going to get it perfectly in line with my post above right there. Hey, let's talk about another little pro tip my dad taught me years ago. This pressure treated post has a factory end on one side and it has a cut end on this side. Since one of these edges is going into the ground in essence or on the concrete, I would always, if I can, put the factory cut end on the ground because it has had more treatment sucked into this factory end than it does out in the middle of the post somewhere where the treatment had to soak in from the faces of the wood to the center. There's less treatment here than there is where the end grain can really soak in and absorb that chemical treatment. So always put, if you can, the non-cut end into the ground. There we go, that's more like it. Check this out. All right, there's the bottom of the post, notched out an inch and a half, both sides, boom, there it goes. Stick it in, it fits nice. Next step, we're gonna screw that joker in place and then we're gonna take this bracket and we're gonna install it right there. Now that's gonna add rigidity in the post this direction, okay? In this direction toward the house back and forth, it doesn't need extra support because there's gonna be a handrail. It's like a giant permanent brace. Uh, side to side, however, that's where we need to get some strength. This bracket is gonna provide that strength. 